Hey everybody, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In one of my last videos, I showed cutting a bottle opener and I talked a little bit about using the blend toolpath on that part. I received a few comments on the video and quite a surprising amount of emails on wanting to know more about how the blend works. And I'd say probably the most common email I, I received was, my Fusion doesn't have blend. Um, do you have to have a special version of Fusion to have that? And the answer is no, but what you have to do is turn it on in preview. So if I go to my 3D menu and take a look, you'll see there is no blend showing up for me. So I have to go up to my name and preferences. Again, someday somebody might be watching this video down the road and this is just going to be part of the release version of Fusion. I'm going to go switch my... Uh, workspace or the uh, what workspace I want to look at for the previews to manufacture and then if I scroll down a bit I'll find the blend strategy I'll hit apply and okay it may ask you to accept some Google Analytics information so that Autodesk can uh, do a little bit of analytics on how you're using the command or how often you're using command I don't exactly know what they do with the data um, and now if I go to the 3D menu, you'll see that blend up here. So now I have a new tool path in here called blend. I should have pointed out something else while I was in preferences. Let's pull this up for a second. I wanna just make a quick note about this. When we go and look at preview features, you'll see that there are little um, icons in this, in this list, kind of a legend. The green eye means that it's a public preview. Everybody can use it and everybody's gonna get it. Um, the locked is an insider preview feature, meaning that uh, the CAM team or CAD team or whoever it might be has given access to some users. And then you'll see that there's also this symbol, meaning that you may be able to use it during the preview. When it's released from preview, however, it's going to be released into the manufacturing extension. So. Here you can see, I'm not exactly sure what this one is. We look down here, uh, CMM, Clidence avoid, uh, Avoidance. So there's some different things that I've been granted access to, pay no attention to the flat strategy. Um, as we go through and see some of these different things that are on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and now just explain that little legend a little bit so that you're not surprised when you're using a feature and it comes out of preview and maybe it goes into the extension and you no longer have access to it. Just be aware that they're letting you know ahead of time that that's going to be the case. So on my screen, we have a part that has a couple features that lend themselves pretty well to blend. On the right hand side, I'm going to add a blend to this little uh, slope section. And on the left hand side, I'm gonna add a scallop toolpath. And the benefit of having a machine up and running and working now is, uh, I'm going to uh, do a video on cutting this part and we'll see the difference in toolpath quality looking at blend on this versus looking at scallop. So let's go ahead and jump in and get to the cam part. You can see I've got a setup already created. Uh, I've faced the part. I use a three inch tool to adapt a rough it all out, uh, leaving I think like a 30,000 seven inch step. And then I come and I contour the outsides. So most of the top side is finished except for the sloped areas. So what I want to do now is go to the 3D menu and select blend. And I'm gonna go select a tool out of my list in this document. I have this three eighths inch ball mill set up and I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And now I wanna to go to my geometry. What you have to do first is select the drive surfaces. So it's a little different than most of the tool paths in Fusion where you define an outside boundary. With this, we're gonna define the surfaces that we want to be machined. So I'm gonna click on those surfaces. Next, we have to define a drive curve. So I'm gonna use this bottom edge as my drive curve and the top edge as my drive curve. To get started with that, I'm gonna hold the Alt key down. I'm gonna click on this edge once. I'm gonna click it a second time. And then I'm gonna click where I want it to stop and the green plus to lock that in. That's gonna be my first drive uh, curve. I'll repeat the same process up top, click it once, click it twice, click where I want it to stop, green plus to lock that selection in. And that is going to be my drive curves and my drive surfaces. We're also going, I'll come back later on and I'll show how the order you select these drive curves is gonna be important to changing the order of how the features are machined. I'm gonna do my negative tolerance trick here. 
uh, for doing the additional offset. And I'm going to turn on contact point boundary. I'll put a card into the video where I show why that negative offset is an, an a negative tolerance or is an important thing. I don't really care about the heights. Uh, I'm going to go over to the passes tab. And now I'm going to set my step over. I'm going to set my step over on the right hand side to 20 thousandths of an inch. I'm also going to turn on smoothing for this tool path. I'll do it for the scallop as well. Uh, I'm not going to make any changes to the tolerance. I'm going to go over to the linking tab. I'm going to set this to be a minimum retraction. And I think that should take care of all the options that I want. So I'm going to hit OK. And what we'll see is this tool path should start at the bottom and work its way to the top, the way that I have it set up. And you can see the tool path is morphing between the two curves following accentuating the geometry that you're seeing on the screen. So in this case, it's starting at the bottom. It's working its way back up to the top. Uh, and it's morphing between those two curves. So that's how blend works. That's, that's the keys. That's the keys to sort of understanding how blend is. Let's go do a scalp and we'll come back to blend and talk about a couple more things. So on the 3D menu, I'm going to go and select scallop from the list. And now I'm going to use that same tool. I have to go select my uh, machining boundary. So I'm just going to go put my mouse over an area where I want this to, uh, machine and I'll just click on that once. I'm going to click on a second time and now see if I can expand this out to get the regions that I want. Just kind of move that around and finally I get the the path that I want that to go on. I'll hit green plus to lock that in. I'm going to do a lot of the same thing, so negative tolerance. I'm just going to hit enter there. Oop, and now let's edit that. I hit enter instead of just uh Let's go back to that. And so there's my negative four tenths. It would be negative tolerance. I'm going to check the box for contact point and boundary. And I'm going to go over to the passes tab. And on this side, I'm going to do a 0 0.01 step over. If you remember on the, on the blend side, I did 20. On the scallop side, I'm going to do 10 just to show that even with the smaller step over, you might get a tool path that matches the geometry to look nicer than a tool path that doesn't at a smaller step over. I don't know exactly the result that we're going to get, so we're going to have to walk out to the machine and actually cut this and look at the differences between the two, which is sort of the cool part, again, about having a machine where we can do these kinds of things. I'm going to go to the linking tab, and I'm going to do a minimum traction again, and I think I'm okay with those options. I'll hit OK. And now we get our tool path. And like I always say in the classes, it looks pretty good, but you always see some of the kryptonite to this uh, kind of a Superman toolpath. You see that you get these seams that where the boundary collapses on itself. If you search YouTube for Rob Lockwood, he's got a pretty good video on sort of making scallop do what you want and eliminating some of these seams and making the geometry work a little bit better. But I'm just going to use scallop as it is out of the box. And there we get our uh, two tool paths. So if I were to go to my simulate now, I'm just going to simulate the entire thing. And let's hit play. I'm going to slow this down just a tish, I think. Speed it back up. So you're going to see we're going to face this part. Then we're going to do the rough, uh, the uh, adaptive roughing on here. Do the pockets. And now it's going to start to step up the walls and kind of cut that taper. And do the same thing over there. It'll do a contour around the outside a couple times, clean it up, and now we're in the blend tool path. So you can see that the, the cutter is really following the geometry path, working from the bottom up the way I have it set up. So I'll slow it down a little bit for when it gets to the scallop so we can kind of see the difference on how scallop works. It's going to jump over, and you can see it's circling from the outside in as it's collapsing around. And eventually there's no more material to cut on some of the areas and so it just starts to only focus on a smaller and smaller area. Again, we're going to see those seam lines and um, kind of the drag marks across the part as it transitions between those two tool paths. So there is our blend on the right, scallop on the left. Now I talked about I was going to show one more thing with this. If I was going to do a 3D and blend one more time, same tool, geometry, my drive services are again going to be the same services that I did before. My drive curves, this time I'm going to select them in a different order. I'm going to alt select the top edge as I go across here, green plus to lock that in. 
and alt select the bottom edge, go across here, green plus to lock that in. I'm gonna do an additional offset one more time of negative tolerance. Select that out of the list, check the box for contact point and boundary. And I'm gonna go back over to my passes and do my 20,000 of an inch and my minimum retraction. And I'll hit okay. And this time what we should see is that the tool path goes from the top to the bottom. So in this case, it starts at the top and goes to the bottom because I selected the drive, first drive curve on the top this time instead of the bottom. So those are uh, some of the ways that the blend tool path works. Blend is currently in development, so it's not fully ready yet. It's actively being developed and fixed and improved and different things that are happening to Blend. Um, but I think you'll find that, and there's a lot of instances where Blend does a really nice job of following the geometry and giving you a toolpath that's visually appealing compared to some of the other toolpaths that we have available. I look for a, a video very shortly, probably just in a couple days, of going out to the machine and cutting this part and we'll take a look at the cut quality of these two surfaces and see if we like one more than the other. And I have a feeling we're gonna like the blend better even with the larger step over. So I haven't run this part, I don't know. That's my gut feeling. So hopefully that helps to explain and understand what blend is a little bit. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. As always, you can email me too at kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com like many of you did for the last video so appreciate the emails i always try to respond to them um, just happy people are watching the videos and seem to be getting something out of here and as always thanks for watching